it is all fake news. Fake news. Fake news left and right. Fake news sites. Fake news. It's fake news. Fake news. Fake news. Fake news. Fake news. You are fake news. Fake news. Fake news. It's all fake news. It's phony stuff. It didn't happen. Fake news. Fake news is all around us. From nowhere the term exploded into the public imagination in the wake of the November 2016 US presidential election to become one of the key issues in modern politics. But where did the term come from? Let's go back to a simpler time, 2016, where everyone was getting mad at a female Ghostbusters sequel, a Muslim was president, R. Kelly was a highly respected pillar of society, and fake news was originally a very obscure term known only to media scholars such as myself and referring to the research into receptions of satire websites like The Onion posting as real news organisations. Hillary Clinton's team alleged that crude online propaganda had overwhelmed America, leading to Trump's election. It's true that very low quality websites putting out deliberately misleading or false stories were widely circulating around the Trumposphere. However, the new president hit back labelling the mainstream press itself fake news and it stuck, rebounding badly on Clinton and the mainstream corporate media. Described as false, often sensational information disseminated under the guise of news reporting, fake news was chosen as Collins Dictionary's 2017 word of the year. But what if some of the news about fake news is itself fake news? Let me explain. One of the first great fake news stories was in November 2016, when the Washington Post promoted a website, propornot.com, describing it as being run by teams of independent researchers using sophisticated analytics software that had identified over 200 fake news websites that, they said, routinely peddled Russian propaganda to Americans. The story went viral, causing a huge stir, paving the way for media giants like Facebook, Google, Bing and YouTube to change their algorithms to combat supposed fake news. Prop or not explicitly told its readers that news sources that criticise Obama, Clinton, Angela Merkel, the EU, NATO, mainstream media, the political centre, war or neoliberal economics are likely Kremlin propaganda peddlers and called for an FBI investigation into those outlets on their list while insisting that this was not McCarthyism. However, there were some very curious things about the list of fake news websites. Embedded in some very obvious low-quality fake news sites were Trump-supporting right-wing ventures like the Drudge Report, libertarian outlets like antiwar.com or the Ron Paul Institute, and also some very high-quality left-leaning websites critical of Hillary Clinton. For example, Consortium News was the child of Robert Parry, the legendary award-winning journalist known for his role in exposing the Iran-Contra affair, while Naked Capitalism was cited as one of Time magazine's best financial blogs. The implication of Proper Not's list was clear. Outlets that did not fall between the Clinton Democrats and moderate Republicans were propaganda. Only the establishment media could be trusted. The Washington Post editors quietly added a note to the report months later saying they did not endorse Prop or Not or its findings. But the story had spread across the world and led to a great number of high-quality alternative news sites, including many not on the list, being deranked, delisted, demonetized and disincentivized by the new algorithms. The plot thickened when two of the websites on the list, Consortium News and Naked Capitalism, investigated who was behind the supposedly independent prop or not and found ties to Western governments and intelligence organisations. The funny thing about prop or not is that to get into their website you need to be logged into the dashboard of the Interpreter magazine, a product of the Atlantic Council Committee, noted George Eliasson, concluding, prop or not is a product of the Atlantic Council's backers. The case is closed. The Atlantic Council is a think tank that grew out of and is closely aligned to NATO, who, along with the US military and state departments, continue to fund its operation. Its board of directors reads as a who's who of the highest state officials. On the board are Henry Kissinger, George W. Bush cabinet members like Condoleezza Rice, Colin Powell and James Baker, CIA directors like Robert Gates, Leon Panetta and Michael Hayden, and a host of former military commanders including Generals Wesley Clark and David Petraeus. This is in addition to senior European statesmen and military personnel. It is precisely this organisation that media giant Facebook announced it has partnered with in order to fight Russian government interference in online media. 39% of Americans and billions around the world get their news from Facebook, 
When an organization like this is deciding what Americans and the rest of the world sees and reads on their screens, it is tantamount to government censorship. Worse still, much of the worst fear-mongering about Russian interference and fake news comes from the Atlantic Council itself, its publications having targeted virtually every non-centrist political movement in Europe as the Kremlin's Trojan horses, groups infiltrated by and spreading Russian influence across the world. From Labour and UKIP in Great Britain, to Golden Dawn and Syriza in Greece, to De Linca and the AFD in Germany, Podemos in Spain, and the Northern League and Five Star Movement in Italy, political movements of consequence across Europe that have arisen and challenged the neoliberal centre from the right and left are being described as Putin's puppets in their reports. These reports are long on claims but very short on evidence. Their purpose is to, one, smear new movements on the left and right that have arisen up as a consequence of the collapse of neoliberalism since 2008 and the profound social dislocation that decades of neoliberal economics has wrought. Two, to cast doubt upon any political movement that challenges the status quo. And three, to shore up support of a crumbling establishment under pressure from all sides. Much of the most sensational reporting on Russian government interference in the media or elections is based on highly questionable Atlantic Council reports in the first place, thus creating a vicious circle that justifies more active measures to weed out fake news, including outright suppression. Therefore, much of the reporting of foreign state propaganda is actually domestic state propaganda itself. Added to this is the increasing phenomenon of false stories about Russia being planted by anonymous government agents. A case in point is the recent Guardian report that former Trump campaign manager Paul Manafort met with Julian Assange and unnamed Russians in the Ecuadorian embassy multiple times between 2013 and 2016. Despite being based upon anonymous sources and being easily verifiable, and that WikiLeaks and Manafort and the consul of the Ecuadorian embassy immediately rejected it, it was picked up around the world. The story was written by Luke Harding, a journalist who had, in the past, been caught plagiarising, had a long and bitter feud with Assange, and had made a career making outrageous claims about Russian collusion without being able to back them up. Worse still, the anonymous source of the report was almost certainly Ecuadorian activist Fernando Villavicencio, director of the anti-government organization Funda Medios. Funda Medios is an organization bankrolled by the US government through USAID. Villavicencio supported a coup against the anti-US president of Ecuador, Rafael Correa, and is a convicted libeler and forger who passed fake documents to The Guardian who published them and subsequently tried to cover up their embarrassing mistake. It was this journalist and CIA-backed source The Guardian saw fit to publish an easily verifiable fake news story about Manafort and Assange. That The Guardian would be so foolish seems impossible, suggesting this was a consciously planted story. As the story began to unravel, The Guardian began an embarrassing climb-down, described by WikiLeaks as one of the most infamous news disasters since Stern published The Hitler Diaries. The Guardian changing much of the tense of the story into the conditional and inserting words like alleged and hoax into the story. Then there's the story of the Integrity Initiative, a government-funded Infowars operation that claims to defend democracy against disinformation from Russia by creating organised networks of journalists and key influencers to counter propaganda attacks, but was actually being used for precisely the opposite reason, to spread anti-Russian propaganda and to build up the idea of Russian interference in European media and politics. The scope of the operation is remarkable, including individuals from multiple branches of government and civil service, some of the country's most well-known journalists, high-ranking military officials, members of parliament and a range of the most prestigious think tanks and reveals the depth of state penetration into our supposedly free media. However, the Integrity Initiative's main enemy appears not to have been Russia, but domestic opposition to neoliberalism. The initiative's slogan is eerily familiar to the Atlantic Council's mantra of democratic defence against disinformation. The initiative conducted a wide-reaching smear campaign against the leader of the Labour Party and possibly future Prime Minister Jeremy Corbyn, using its influencers to falsely attack him and Labour as Kremlin puppets in order to stop him becoming Prime Minister and implementing his socialist agenda. The UK media onslaught against Corbyn has been overwhelming, including journalists calling for his murder just 10 days after Labour Member of Parliament Joe Cox was murdered in a terrorist attack. Less than one year later, terrorist Darren Osborne travelled to London in order to kill Corbyn. Osborne had been radicalised by reading the British media, according to the head of the UK Counter-Terrorism Command. 
Worse still, the initiative has also set up networks operating in Spain, France, Germany, Italy, Greece, the Netherlands, Lithuania, Norway, Serbia and Montenegro to influence foreign politics. In Spain, the initiative launched an operation to prevent Colonel Pedro Banos being appointed head of national security. Once head of the counterintelligence and security for the European army, Banos had warned against NATO aggression against Russia. A coordinated attack by journalists in the UK and Spain claiming he was a Russian stooge was strong enough to halt his appointment. This is state meddling on an enormous scale. Across the West, stories about supposed Russian infiltration of the media and political system are constantly overblown, cynically repeated propaganda spread in an attempt to construct a bogeyman that can be blamed for all of the West's flaws, negating the need for the establishment to critically evaluate the failures of neoliberalism across the world. Instead, those movements that have arisen as a consequence of those failures are conveniently brushed off as Russian psychological operations. From the Standing Rock protesters to Bernie Sanders to the Yellow Vest movement, everyone challenging the political establishment are really just Siberian candidates. None of this is to say that Russia isn't attempting to sway Western public opinion. As a nation state like any other, of course it's trying to pursue its own interests. But evidence suggests that Russia is a relatively minor player in the fake news saga compared to Western governments cynically whipping up the hysteria of a foreign enemy for its own ends. Fake news runs much deeper than a bunch of Slavs in their basements. The deep irony is that so much of our news about state-sponsored fake news is actually state-sponsored fake news itself. Well done, you've made it to the end of the video. If you liked it, why not share it with your friends or on social media? And if you really liked it, you could even support me on Patreon or subscribe down below or follow the channel on Twitter. I'm planning on releasing a lot more content so you won't want to miss out. Thanks very much.